Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Gizmo Joe. Today we are going to be taking a look at this laptop in front of me. This is an MSI Sword gaming laptop. It's got a 15 inch screen. Uh, the model number I believe is just if we flick it over onto the back and take a look here. It is the MSI Sword 15A11UD. So uh, just this guy here is a gaming laptop. It has a uh, NVIDIA RTX graphics card in there. It's got a i7, I think 11th gen in there. Um, it's a couple years old, but it's still very, very capable machine uh, in terms of gaming. I believe the sort of recommended retail price on this guy when it first came out was about 1500 bucks. Um, that's US. So definitely a uh, expensive piece of hardware. Um, and yeah, like I said, it's, uh, you know, definitely designed to play games. Now, what's up with this guy? Why do I have it? What are we doing? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to do a RAM upgrade as well as a secondary SSD in there. So what we've got here is a machine that has a 512 gigabyte, I think it's a M.2 drive as its main storage. It's not a whole heck of a lot, particularly when it comes to games. So what I want to do is I want to stick another uh, solid state drive in there to use as storage. And we're going to use a 2.5 SSD because they're just a heck of a lot cheaper right now and this laptop actually has a compartment where we can slot a 2.5 inch standard SSD in there so that's really good. The other thing that we're going to do is we are going to essentially take off this back panel uh, and we're going to take a look at the RAM situation. Right now this guy uh, the basic configuration was only 8 gigabytes. I want to bump it up to 16. Um, so what we're going to do is basically we're going to swing this guy around. There's a whole bunch of little screws here they're all over the place the other the one that you got to watch out for is this one that already says factory seal you just punch through that and make sure you unscrew that one but it's all just standard phillips head stuff there's no torque screws or anything like that so it should be pretty uh basic so all you got to do is remove all of these screws that are on the back panel here and i'm going to do that and i'm going to come back and show you guys uh once i remove all the screws just word of caution don't lose your screws all right, so uh, have a receptacle, something to put them in so that you can make sure that you have all your screws necessary for when you want to put this guy back together. Anyway, let's unscrew all these uh, screws and take a look at the inside of this machine. Okay, so I've removed all of the screws. So basically, anytime you see a screw, you just got to take it out. All right. Um, the only one that is uh, different, so all these screws are exactly the same length. So it doesn't really matter if you, you know, keep track of where each one went because they're all exactly the same, save for this one right up here. Um, basically, this guy is a smaller one. Um, and you can tell it's not as recessed as the other sort of holes here. So just make note that one of those screws is a little bit shorter than the others and it goes right there. Um, all of the others are all the same size. So what you'll notice is once you take all the screws out that this thing is still... Uh, this, this bottom panel just doesn't lift off. It's not like a MacBook where you remove the screws and it just kind of comes right off. There's definitely clips around here that is adhering this sort of black bottom part of the case to the, the white top bit. And you can kind of see here that I've already started to work around and trying to lift this up. I find right here, this fan here, you can stick, you know, don't, probably use a screwdriver that's probably not the smartest thing in the world but you know if you can get your fingers in there and you can kind of peel it up that's great because that's a good starting point otherwise you want to get a spudger or you know even a credit card you know driver's license something like that where you can just kind of work your way around the edges and what you want to do is you just want to slowly work your way all the way around um, again double checking that there are, all the screws have been removed because if you get a screw in there and you got to try to lift this off it won't lift off so you just want to make sure that you're going around all the way sort of lifting it it should come apart fairly easily and once uh, you kind of work your way all the way around this whole black back panel should just come right off and then uh, that's the inside of the computer and then we can do all of our upgrades so that's what I'm going to do right now I'm just going to kind of work my fingers around this separating this black bit from the uh sort of lower case and uh yeah i'll be right back okay so removing this black 
panel here uh, is not difficult at all. Like I said, just get some leverage around where that fan is and then just use your fingers. I was able to just use my fingers all the way around and basically this thing just lifted off completely. So uh, what we can see here is, uh, you know, obviously the inside of the computer. I'm going to punch in a little bit closer and obviously kind of see if I can get a bit of a better angle here just so that you guys can see a little bit better. I'm just going to point out a couple things. So um, again, we've got the M.2 SSD just here. So this is housing sort of our operating system. It's only 500 gigs. So what I want to do is I want to pop in a 2.5 inch SSD right here. You can kind of make out, you can just sort of see it, how it's a SATA connector here. You've got this big sort of rubber spacer thing uh, because obviously they don't give you that storage space. So you just need to remove that. So you just take that off. And now I can take like this SSD that I just had laying around. This is a 500 gig SSD and I'm just going to install it in here and I'm going to have some extra storage space. Um, the other thing that we want to do is remove this sort of heat shield cover here uh, because this is the RAM, I'm pretty sure, I think. And yep, there it is. So it should have another, um, like here, if I, uh, spare with me, I'm just going to punch in closer and I'll show you guys. Okay, so I've spun the laptop around just to try to get a little bit of a closer look here. Uh, but what you'll notice is if we lift up these little flaps here, uh, there is one RAM module already in there. That's an 8 gigabyte stick. I believe it's at 3200 megahertz. So uh, what we wanted to do is get another uh, 3200 stick. And I found this one from Time Tech. I've never used these guys before, but uh, they get really good reviews. People say it's uh, you know quite reputable and reliable, so I figured I'd give it a shot. This guy was only about, I think, 11 bucks for another eight gigabyte module. So that is a pretty good deal, in my opinion. And so what we're gonna do is, obviously there's one sitting here, but you'll notice that if we lift up this other little heat shield here, there is a slot right here for another RAM module. So that's what we're going to do. We're just going to pop this guy in right now. I'm just going to open this. Apologies, I don't have it open already. But uh, installation should be fairly simple. That's what's great about this uh, laptop. I mean, this gaming laptop is super easy to open it up. You can make really easy upgrades um, almost immediately. So, um, you know, if you're in the market for something that is easily upgradable, and again, you know, a lot of these gaming laptops are not super upgradable, but uh, yeah, adding some RAM and some storage is, is not a problem at all. Uh, one thing I do want to mention is that this is DDR4, so if you have the same laptop, you want to make sure that you're getting the same uh, RAM, and basically what you got to do is that little notch is sort of asymmetrical, so you just want to line it in, and you're not going to try to put it in straight on, it's uh, like sort of on an angle, so you want to just sort of get it to seat properly. This is a little tricky, so just be careful. All right, I think that's all right. And then once it'll kind of be up on an angle like that, and basically what you got to just push it down, and then these little metal arms will lock in around the RAM module and seat it properly. And you can kind of check and make sure that it's not moving. But other than that, it seems to be okay. So, what we're going to do next is we are going to install our SSD for extra storage. Um, so, yeah, so just bear with me, and I'll punch in a little bit closer to that area. Okay, so I just spun the laptop around just so that this um, SATA connector here is a little bit closer to me. So I opted for just a PNY solid-state drive. I've had good luck with these in the past. This is 500 gigabytes. I think you can get these guys on Amazon for like 20 bucks. It's like obscene how cheap they are. Um, I could have went with a bigger one, but I had this one laying around. It wasn't doing anything in the house. So I figured, what the heck, I'll just use this for now. And then if I want to upgrade later, I could always get a bigger one and just you know drag and drop everything that's on here onto the other drive. Um, again, this laptop was super, super easy to open, so that's not going to be an issue. Um, obviously, this is a SATA connector, so you just want to make sure that you're lining it up properly. You guys probably can't see it because I don't have it on a good enough angle, but it's going to go in just like this, and basically what you're doing is you're just feeding that connector into the receiver here. It should have a satisfying, not click, but it should sit there and feel fairly solid. So that's it.
um, just installed that. Basically, once we turn on Windows, Windows should recognize that I've already formatted it for NTFS, so it's ready to go. Um, and yeah, Windows should just recognize it automatically. There is a couple other things I want to point out, so I'm just going to zoom out a little bit so you can see the entire interior of the laptop. Okay, so we've added some really cheap solid state drive storage to this laptop uh, via the 2.5 uh, inch SATA connector that we had here. So um, we've done that. We've also installed another RAM module here to bring it up from eight to 16. And yeah, we're ready to roll. We just need to turn this bad boy back on. But I wanted to point out a couple other things. You can replace this M.2 drive if you want it as well. Um, basically, you just have to clone that drive onto another M.2 and slot it in there. Solid state drives are super cheap right now, so that might be a good upgrade. I mean, you can get like, I think like a two terabyte M.2 I saw the other day for like 60 bucks. It's pretty obscene how cheap they are. Uh, the other thing as well over here is your uh, essentially wireless module. So that's your Bluetooth and your Wi-Fi. If that doesn't work or stops working or you have any problems, it's pretty easy just to remove that. It's not buried somewhere. Um, it's just really, really basic. Now, the other thing I was going to show you guys today was basically how to reapply thermal paste. One of the complaints about this particular model is that the fans can get quite loud. I have experienced that as well. Um, and basically what you would need to do is, you know, just kind of remove all these cooling, uh, I forget what they call these pipes or whatever. I don't know, but basically you're, you're removing these and then I believe the... CPU is here. I could be wrong, but basically what you're doing is you're uh, getting rid of the thermal paste that's on there and replacing it with something maybe a little bit better. I've got uh, some Corsair high performance thermal paste here that I like to use. And basically you just put a little squeeze on there and then you basically reapply everything. The only problem is um, I don't have any isopropyl alcohol. So uh, you need isopropyl alcohol because it doesn't damage electronics because it's basically 90% alcohol, so it dries really quickly. Uh, but in order to remove the old thermal paste, you need a little bit of isopropyl alcohol, use a Q-tip, whatever, to clean it off before you apply the new stuff. I thought I had some, but I don't. So I'm gonna have to run out to my local Walgreens or someplace that carries it and hopefully pick up a bottle. Um, if I do, and uh, you know, I do in, you know, uh, reapply the thermal paste, I'll probably do it in another video. So I apologize if that's what you were looking for with this particular video. But um, at least we've installed our new solid state drive and we've bumped up the RAM from eight gigabytes to 16. So we should be able to definitely, um, you know, put this laptop through its paces a little bit more. I'll be able to store some more games on here. Pretty excited about that. Anyway, that's pretty much it for this episode. All you need to do now is to reapply the back uh, panel. So you're just taking it, putting the back back on it just snap it back into place and you're replacing all the screws and just remember there is that one shorter screw that just goes right up here uh, but other than that this is a fairly capable machine it's uh, definitely one of the you know cheaper uh, gaming machines and that's because you know depending on your configuration you can save a couple bucks by you know not getting the the extra components um, I would argue that it's just cheaper to get them yourself and install them yourself anyway so it's probably just a better way to do it Anyway, uh, thanks so much for watching. If uh, this video helped you out at all, definitely leave a comment down in uh, the comment field. I'll leave um, sort of links to all of the parts that I used in the description. So if you guys have a similar laptop or whatever, and you want to essentially use cheaper parts uh, like I do, because I'm always looking for a bargain, um, yeah, you can find them easily in the description. Anyway, that's going to do it for this episode. Thanks so much for watching. This is Gizmo Joe signing off.